Hey, this is Eric, and this video is one in a series on AI tools for education. In this video, we're taking a look at Mizu. You can access the full list of all of the AI tools, videos, and links at bit.ly slash Kurtz AI tools. So Mizu is a free tool that allows your students to have safe, monitored interactions with educational AI chatbots. This tool reminds me a lot of another tool we've looked at before called School AI. I think a lot of similarities in the approach here. Basically, here's how it works. You as a teacher would go in and set up a free account for yourself, and then you would either select a pre-made chatbot or you can create one of your own. Um, then you share a link, an invite link to your students, and that lets them connect to that AI chatbot and participate in whatever the activity is that you've set up. Now, do note the students are, they're not signing in, they're not getting an account, uh, they're simply putting their name in and they are connecting to the chatbot. Now, while the students engage in that activity, you can monitor their interactions. You can see everything the chatbot is saying and everything each student is saying as well. When the activity is over, uh, the AI will provide a grade and a summary for the student based on their interactions with the chatbot and the rubric that you set up for the activity. I really am so excited about these type of tools. Uh, both Mizu and School AI, I think, are just doing phenomenal work providing a way to meet students where they're at, to have a chat tool that is safe, where the students can interact with the AI, and it will adjust to their level. If they're struggling, it can help explain things, and it can help uh, go further in areas that they are interested in, and of course, summarize all of that for you as a teacher. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to pop on over to the Mizu site. I'm logged in with my account here. Um, and we're going to run through a couple of ways to uh, get a chat bot up and going. Uh, one of the easiest is to use a pre-made one. So if you notice over here on the left, there's the explore section. That's what I'm in right now. This shows you uh, lots and lots and lots of um, already existing chat bots that people have created and posted to the site. Now, if you want to narrow down, down, you can come up here and say, oh, I'm looking specifically for something for fifth grade, for example. And then you could just roll through fifth grade um, appropriate chatbot tools. Or you could always come up here and search if you're looking for a tool on a very specific topic. Now, if it turned out that one of these looked good, I'm like, oh, hey, this is great. A reading adventure with synonyms. If that sounds like an interesting chatbot, I can go ahead and click on the Try Now button. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to give me a, a much more detailed overview of what's going to happen in this chatbot. So it's giving me the learning objectives. It's giving me a description, giving me the instructions here. And then over here on the side, I could actually test it out before I ever send it out to the students. So in this case, it says, Welcome, Brave Word Explorer. I am Hoot, the guardian of the enchanted forest of words. Are you ready to embark? on a reading adventure where your wisdom will light the path. Let's begin. And I could say something like, yes, I am. And uh, we could then continue that conversation. Now, in this one, it's set up to cover things like identifying synonyms, expanding vocabulary, improving reading comprehension, enhancing writing skills. So basically, it's saying that students are going to engage with a chat bot that tells a story, periodically asking them to choose synonyms to complete sentences. This approach improves reading comprehension by exposing students to diverse vocabulary and context and encourages them to think critically about word choice. And so you can see that's what's happening already. We're starting our sentence here. The little squirrel scurried up the tree eager to blank its acorns before winter. And now we have to decide what word is best going to fill that in. Now, if we said, hey, this is great. This fits what I'm working with my students on. I could now click add to library. And if I do that, that is going to put a, uh, a link to that right inside of my library. And so now anytime I want, I could use that with my students. So again, that's one approach. You can go to explore. You can see the already existing chat bots that have been created within the Mizu community. And then you can uh, add them to your library. And so if I go to my chat bots, there's the synonyms one. Here's an earthquake one. Here's a human heart one. A bunch of different ones I've been playing around with. And I could run sessions off of these at any point that I want. Now, there are other options here. 
And another one is to create your own chatbot. So notice from the My Chatbot screen where I'm finding these, I could also come up here and I could click on the button that says Create Chatbot because maybe you were looking through the Explore section and you couldn't find something that just quite did what you needed and you've got this really great idea that you think would be a really neat experience for your students there. Uh, so I could come up here and click on the Create Chatbot button. And from here, I can now choose to either have one AI generate or customize one. So in both cases, I'm making them. The first one, the AI is just really helping out uh, quite a lot for me. Where with custom, I'm in control of every single thing in there. But let's just go ahead and uh, we'll start with custom just to show you all the options. We will not take the time to actually create one. Uh, through the custom option, we'll have an AI generated one, which would be a lot quicker. But I'll go ahead and pull up custom just to show you all the choices you could make when doing this. So we could do a lot of things here. Uh, first of all, we would give a title and a grade level and our learning objectives of what we want this chat bot to do. But then down in the format, we can give instructions for the AI. We can set up rules for it to follow. We can upload files that we want it to reference. Under customization, we can give it a picture, a name, a welcome message. Under tools, we can turn on a timer. We can even turn on audio. That lets it read things aloud to the students and it lets the students speak into a with a little microphone icon to speak their answers especially helpful for younger students as well. And we can set up what our grading rubric is. How do we want this to be graded? There's also a details tab where we can give a short description and some instructions for the students. So as you can see, there's a lot you could put into building a chat bot there if you want to do it uh, yourself. Now, just to show you, though, you don't have to <laughs> do it entirely by yourself. Instead, we can click Create Chat Bot and we can say AI Generated. So in a case like this, what you're saying is I looked in the, you know, the community collection of uh, chat bots and I couldn't find one that quite did what I was hoping for. So help me create one. So in this case, let's say um, I'm teaching eighth grade and it's a science class and we're learning about animal adaptations. So I could copy like our standard from the, you know, the state, you know, science standards. And I could say students are supposed to understand and compare um, adaptations that allow an organism to survive under different environmental conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can put that objective right in there and now I can click get ideas. So all I've done is basically told at the grade level and what it is I'm hoping to achieve and I just need some ideas. What would be a good chat bot that might help students uh, to learn that? Well, what it's doing now is it's gonna generate, in this case, three examples for me here. So I could do a quiz option where this chat bot will quiz the students on the differences between specialists and generalist organisms. Or I could do role play, adaptation crisis. Students will engage in a role play scenario where they must decide how a given organism would survive a sudden change in its environment. Or I could do an interactive story. This chat bot will tell the story of a raccoon's journey through different environments, challenging students to choose the adaptations that will help it survive. Now, any one of these are great. And if I say, you know, these this interactive story one sounds pretty cool, I could click on the generate button now. And basically what's going to happen is it's going to fill in all those other boxes for me. So instead of me having to go in and fill them all in, it's going to do it. Now, I can still edit them. So it's not you're not totally giving control completely over to the AI. You can go through and say, oh, I want to tweak this. I want to tweak this. I want to add this. And you can adjust it as it goes. But it's going to do a lot of that heavy lifting for you here right away. And so here it is getting uh, all that set up. It should look very familiar. This is the same look that we had when we were doing uh, the custom one. Here we have the format. We could expand that and we could change the AI instructions. We could change the rules under customization. We could change the name and the welcome message. And under tools, um, it did put in a grading rubric, which is excellent. If I wanted to upload my own rubric, I could put that in. I'm gonna turn on the audio just because I wanna show that that is an option in there. You can choose between a male and a female voice there um, for the audio. And if we hit play, we should be able to hear what that sounds like. Here's the female voice. Hey, I'm Emma, and this is how I sound. I hope you're doing well today. Do you wanna chat with me? And then here's the male voice. Hey, I'm John, and this is how I sound. I hope you're doing well today. Do you want to chat with me? 
Excellent. And we can also turn on a timer. I won't do that in this case, but you could set a timer if you wanted to have a limit on how long the students are going to be uh, interacting. And of course, there's also the details up here uh, where I can uh, change the description and the instructions for the students. So we can, again, adjust a lot of stuff there. Um, I'll save those couple of quick changes I just made there. And of course, over here on the right, as always, I can test this out if I want to try it before I uh, publish it to my students. I could do a chat with the chatbot. But if I'm happy with that, I could go ahead and click publish and decide, is this just for me to use or does it show up in that uh, uh, shared community? For right now, I'm just going to say just for me uh, as I am still, of course, just uh, testing this one out there. And there you go. So whether you're going to use ones that already exist in the uh, community uh, of, um, of available chatbots, or if you're going to create your own, a lot of easy ways to do that. So let's see, what does it look like now from the student's point of view? So let's go ahead and let's grab, um, we'll use the um, one that we just created there about the raccoon. And let's say we want to generate a new session. So we're going to click on new session and we'll copy the link that it creates. And that's basically all that happens. It just creates a, a link. You copy that link and you now make that link available to your students. If they click on on the link, they're going to be able to join into that session. So you could put that in Google Classroom or whatever you know tool that you use um, to get a link out to your students. So here's what it looks like for the student. Let me pull over my demo student here, and um, I'll just go ahead and I'll put in my name, but the student you know would type in their name. Click Start Session and give that a moment to launch. And so from this point on, we will not run through the entire thing. We'll just show you what this looks like. So again, uh, this, I, did, I did turn on audio so they could click this. Hello, young explorer. I'm Remy, your raccoon guide. Are you ready to embark on an adventure through diverse environments and discover the secrets of survival? And I'll say, yes, I am. All right. And... We'll let that uh, get going here. And now it's going to generate the response to us as it uh, moves us along in the story. So in this case, it's saying fantastic as we venture forth. Remember the key to survival is adaptability. You'll help me choose adaptations that fit each environment we encounter. Uh, we're going to go through dense forests and, ar and arid deserts to start. Let's imagine we're entering a lush, de dense forest. The ecosystem is rich in biodiversity, uh, but resources are spread out and competition is high. What adaptation should I choose to help me thrive? Arrive here? Should I be using my sharp claws for climbing to find food, long legs for running fast to escape predators, or a strong sense of smell to locate food from far away? I'm guessing probably the sense of smell is probably what we're looking at here since we're talking about uh, resources being you know, spread out, uh, but competition is high too. Um, I might say something like, uh, I will use my sense of smell. And let's see how it responds uh, to us with that. Now, keep in mind, we can also just ask questions. If we're confused about something, we can ask for more clarification. It is a fully functioning uh, AI large language model type tool. So uh, yes, this is an excellent choice. Awesome. And we will not, well, again, we won't continue through all of this, but you get the idea. So now the student can go back and forth chatting with a chat bot. And again, it's going to meet them where they're at. If they're confused about something, it's going to help bring them along. It'll back up and kind of bring them forward and ask them some more questions. Um, and so even though it starts out similar for the students, it could definitely branch as they work through this particular activity. All right. Well, I'm going to go up here and exit for this student. I'll just click on the little exit up there and I can say we can you know, end the session or save it for later. And that'll give me a link if I want to get back into it to pick it up again later. Now, what does this look like for the teacher while all of this is going on? So let me pull up um, uh, an earlier session that I actually had, had done and tried out here. Uh, I had done one on earthquakes. And so um, I'll go ahead and let me uh, pull, up, uh, pull up the session that I had done on earthquakes. And I had uh, some students, some you know, well, it was me, <laughs> some, some demo students I was pretending to be trying that out. So let me go ahead and go on into this, uh, this demo session uh, that I had tried on that. And you'll see that uh, Gavin has completed it and Morgan is still working on it. She's still in the middle of it. Well, if I come in here and give a click 
here on Gavin and pull him up, notice I get a full list of everything. I can see everything the AI has said, all of Gavin's responses, all of his questions, and then I get an overall summary here. He got an A on this and explains he demonstrated a strong understanding of earthquake concepts, etc., etc., etc. And so this is a wonderful way for you to be able to see not only what the students said, but what were their confusions? What did they ask about? And to get a really nice, quick, easy, um, you know, grade and summary of the student's understanding. So you know, are there things that you need to reteach? Um, are there things that are resonating more with the students than others? So that's a quick example of what that could look like for you then as a teacher to be able to check in and see um, what the uh, students have done inside of these chatbots, which again, it's really nice because you have all that full access to that at any point that you need. Now, again, there are so many great options here. We barely looked at a few of them in my blog post. I tried to pull out, you know, examples of some of the really neat ones here. It's things like uh, Adventures in Adding with Addy or Zoom the Zoologist, Guess the Animal Adventure. We've got Rhyme Ranger Rosie's Word Wonderland. We've got one on mummification. We've got one called Story World where you're writing a story. We've got one um, learning about lift and weight in flight. Here's one on Aryan perimeter and math. Here's one on Anne Frank. Here's a debate. Are cats or dogs better? Uh, here's a journey through the human heart. Uh, the misinformation maze talking about media literacy skills. Here we've got a, another debate on women's challenges in the U.S. constitutional creation. And here we've got an interview. Meet Robert Frost. Uh, and so those are just a small collection of some of the ones that have already been created. But you can let your imagination run wild. Do you want your students students to interview a famous historical figure? Do you want them to have a debate on a topic? Do you want them to learn about a career? Do you want them to uh, discuss, you know, uh, a book that they've read? Uh, whatever it is, uh, Mizu is a fantastic tool that is going to allow you to provide safe, monitored AI personalized interactions for your students. And the best thing of all, it is free. <laughs> yes. Uh, so as with all these tools, I like to keep track on uh, pricing for these. Uh, um, at the moment, it is currently free for teachers and students to use. So I would definitely encourage you, if you have not tried that out yet, uh, check out Mizu and get uh, your students chatting with these amazing uh, customized chatbots. And for all my other resources, check out my blog at controlaltachieve.com. And to connect with me, go to bit.ly slash CAA-connect, where you'll find all of my social media links, email, newsletter, and more.